The Browns back on the practice field today, starting their mandatory mini camp. Three days of practice here in Berea. But before we get to that, uh, some off the field stuff to get to. Greg Newsom and Perion Winfrey uh, involved in uh, an armed robbery. They were robbed at gunpoint, Mary Kane. So we heard from Kevin Stefanski. We heard from Miles Garrett today. And Miles, in particular, uh, had some strong things to say about it. Yeah, they both had their cars stolen. Uh, and I'm sure both guys are very, very rattled. They did not speak to us today. But as you mentioned, Kevin Stefanski did and Miles did. So in terms of Miles, uh, Miles said, uh, this is an opportunity to do more in the community, to show people uh, that we still have work to do in uh, making sure that people know that you don't have to resort to this kind of behavior. Uh, he said he's not dismayed by it. It doesn't make a statement for him about our city, our community. Uh, he still obviously feels wonderful about the city of Cleveland, loves it so much here, uh, but he's just using it as a further call to action. Yeah, Ashley, I've, and obviously I'm sure Greg and Perion were both rattled. Greg was on the practice field. Perion is here. He was not on the practice field, uh, but Miles sort of continuing to be that spokesman for the rest of the team here. Yeah, it's kind of like what you would expect, I think, to see from Miles Garrett after a situation like this. I'm not surprised we heard from him today, and I'm also not surprised that both of those guys are here, just kind of especially knowing Greg Newsom that he wasn't going to let that stop him from practicing today as well. Uh, another thing Miles talked about, this is the first time we've heard from him since the passing of Browns legend Jim Brown. So, of course, uh, Miles certainly had thoughts on that. And Miles, you know, Mary Kay, if you think about it, there's some echoes of, of Jim Brown there with the work Miles does in the community and some of the causes that he championed. So certainly that connection with Jim was strong. It really was strong. He said... Uh Jim Brown was everything to him. It was very powerful. It was, a, you know, it was, again, what you would expect for Miles. He's the go-to guy in these kinds of situations when, uh, you know, when there's a big moment in uh, Brown's history. So certainly this was one of the biggest. And, uh, and Miles was deeply impacted by having Jim Brown here. Just his greatness, his legacy, as you mentioned, not just on the football field, in the community. Miles has tried to live up to some of that. He's done a tremendous job of it. And of course, uh, the passing left him very saddened. And, and Ashley, kind of along the same lines of what we just talked about, Miles has become so much more bold in kind of what he talks about and just being outspoken uh, about all, all sorts of issues in the community. Yeah, it's really something I think especially that we've seen over the last two years. And to build off of what Mary Kay said, you know, Miles said he thinks if he remembers correctly that Jim Brown was actually like the first person that called him after he was drafted and told him he was coming to Cleveland. So, I mean, what a story for him. And I think it's understandable why all these years later, Miles still like feels that connection with him. And I think he was a good guy to hear from on that, this topic too specifically. Now there was a practice today. Let's get into that a little bit. And that's also kind of runs with another guy we heard about today. Amari Cooper was back on the practice field in Mary Kay. He looked like Amari Cooper. That, uh, that connection with Deshaun Watson looked good. This is obviously a very passer friendly setting, a very pass catching friendly setting, but it was just good to see Amari looking like Amari again. And it sounded like he was happy to be out there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was absolutely affected by the core muscle injury at the end of last season. It was very painful. He couldn't run. He couldn't do the things that he normally does. Now he's out there. He's got that spring in his step again. He's happy. You know, I you know I noticed a lightness of being about him, right? I mean, he was just uh, answering questions with a smile on his face, and you could just tell uh, that he feels a lot more comfortable. He's got that behind him. He's less stressed, and I think he's ready to go. Yeah, and, and Ashley, we've seen the impact Amari can have. And, and again, just seeing him out there, it just looks different than everybody else. That's not even an insult to any other receivers. It just looks different when it's Amari. Yeah, just because he's so precise, I think, in everything he does. I mean, you and I were standing near each other, Dan, when he made this great catch, like, in traffic. And I think that was the 7-on-7 seven seven period. It may have been 11-on-11s. 11 he made some really nice plays in the red zone. I think the first play down here when they moved to red zone drills to end practice, he caught this absolute dart from Deshaun Watson. I mean, you could hear that ball hit Amari Cooper's hands. Worst receivers would not be able to make a catch like that. But overall, like we said, it's good to kind of see him not really feeling like he's missing a step, not really seeming hampered by that core muscle. And he said so far everything's been on track. He hasn't hit any roadblocks that you wouldn't expect with a recovery like this. We also heard from Rodney McLeod today just real quickly. Uh, he talked a lot about that culture that uh, he, he 
found in Philadelphia, learned a lot from uh, from Jim Schwartz, but also mentioned Greg Williams as someone he played for in St. Louis that he learned a lot from. And Mary Kay, you know, you can tell Rodney understands why he's here. And it's about trying to get this defense and, and get this culture set to a point where they can have success like he had in Philadelphia. Yeah, and, and he is so old school and, you know, he's like Jim Schwartz in that regard. And if he likes Greg Williams, <laughs> you know he's old school. And I think he'll pair so nicely with Juan Thornhill in terms of setting the tone here and making sure that uh, everybody's playing up to the standard that they need to. Both of these guys uh, have been to the Super Bowl. Some have, I mean, Juan Thornhill has two Super Bowl rings. So I think these guys are going to make a tremendous impact. And Ashley, we spent so much time writing and talking and, and almost bemoaning the culture of this team last year. So a guy like Rodney is so important. Right. I mean, I think it says something or it says a lot to players when you have a player in the locker room on the field who basically acts as that extension of the coach or the coordinator, right? Like, I think players sometimes are like, willing to listen to it from a coach you don't want to say unwilling but they're more like willing to actually go out and implement it when it's a fellow player or a fellow guy in their position group saying something giving them directions or maybe just can help them understand it a little bit better and see it in action so i definitely think again a really important voice i'm kind of bummed i missed that interview dan i wasn't over in that scrum today well uh, me and Irie, we handled it we held it down over there so uh you'll get you'll be able to read all about that at cleveland.com browns as well as what miles had to say what amari had to say uh, all of that it'll all be at cleveland.com com slash Browns.